Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Saturday, September 7th. Today is day 337 since October 7th. In the West Bank, um, the health ministry said that yesterday, a 13-year-old girl, Bana Laboum, was killed by Israeli uh, Defense Forces fire in the West Bank village of Kerut. Her father said she was hit while in her family's home with her sisters. Eyewitnesses said clashes had erupted between soldiers and Palestinians after Israeli settlers had thrown stones and set fields on fire. The Israeli army said its forces were dispatched to clashes in order to disperse the disorder in the area, and they added that they are investigating the circumstances of the little girl's death. The family of the Turkish-American woman who was reportedly killed by the Israeli army at fire while protesting in the West Bank yesterday, um, a 26-year-old woman, Isenur Ezgi Egi, uh, urged the U.S. government to launch an independent investigation into the incident. The State Department said it was urgently gathering more information about the circumstances of her death. And I just wanted to take a minute today, um, we talked about this yesterday, but to say a little bit more about this incident, this 26-year-old had just graduated from the University of Washington. I'm an American uh, born in Turkey, considered a Turkish American. She was fatally shot while protesting in the West Bank near the city of Nablus. At least two witnesses said that it was the Israeli uh, forces who shot her. She was shot in the head. Uh, doctors confirmed when we consider the death more than a year ago of American Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, who was shot and killed uh, by the Israeli Defense Forces. Many are saying, is there even a question of how this happened? Um, and there were um, messages from the White House and uh, Secretary Blinken. They have expressed grief over the incident. But where are the, ca the calls for accountability? Instead, the ad attitude's been, let's wait and see. Let's see what the investigations determine. And often the investigations are being carried out by the very people accused of the crime in this case, the Israeli military. Um, so an independent American investigation is critical. We will certainly call for that uh, in the days ahead. The Israeli Defense Forces arrested a Palestinian driver who hit a police car near the settlement of Ali in the West Bank. There were no casualties reported. Israel's prison service personnel in the security wing of the Megiddo prison handcuffed and humiliated detainees on Friday. This was reported by Haaretz. Footage obtained showed dozens of detainees lying on their stomachs in handcuffs, some without clothing, while guard dogs barked uh, over them. The prison services said that this is a routine exercise. In Gaza, local medics told Reuters that Israeli army strikes across the Strip killed at least 61 people in the last two days. Medics said that an Israeli airstrike on a school compound that was serving as a shelter for displaced people in the Jabal Atliya refugee camp killed at least eight people. Another 15 were wounded. The IDF said that the strike was targeting a Hamas command center inside the compound. Five more people were reportedly killed in a strike on a house in, of, inside Gaza City. Another Israeli airstrike killed an additional four people and wounded 25 others at a different school compound that houses displaced families in Gaza City. Palestinian medics said the IDF said that the airstrike was targeting a command center operated by Hamas gunmen. The IDF and Shin Bet security said they killed two Islamic Jihad battalion commanders in central Gaza. And the death toll, as the most reported uh, recent numbers, is 40,939 Palestinians killed, 94,616 wounded. Um, in Gaza uh, since October 7th. Two American officials told the New York Times that Hamas recently added new demands for a hostage release deal that included asking for more Palestinian prisoners to be released in the first phase of an agreement. CIA Director Bill Burns said the U.S. is working on a Gaza ceasefire proposal and is hopeful that it will happen in coming days. He said this is a question of political will. Safir Cohen, kidnapped on October 7th and released in the deal 55 days after she was kidnapped, uh, said that she was filled with hope when in captivity she saw on television protests calling for the return of hostages. She earned, urged demonstrators to continue in their efforts, saying, I ask that you take to the streets and continue to support uh, all of the hostages who remain behind. Protests calling for hostage deals are set to take place across Israel all day today, Saturday. In terms of Hezbollah and um, Israeli Defense Forces uh, hostilities, they have continued. The Air Force struck 15 Hezbollah launch sites in South Lebanon yesterday. The Lebanese Health Ministry said that three rescue workers were killed and two wounded in South Lebanon. And a barrage of rocket fire today, the IDF said um, it experienced a barrage of rocket fire, fire and carried out retaliatory attacks uh, against Hezbollah in South Lebanon. The Washington Post had an article called The War Within a War, talking about how Israel is taking aim at Hamas militants that are located inside of Lebanon, speaking about how experts within Lebanon have said that Israel's assassination campaign against Hamas officials has brought Hamas and Hezbollah closer together. The attack was part of an intensifying assassination campaign against Palestinian militants in Lebanon, and it's been identified as a war 
within a war that is largely obscured by escalating exchanges of fire between the IDF and Hezbollah. Most of the Palestinians targeted are mid-level members of Hamas. They're involved in finance or logistics. But a January strike in Beirut's southern suburbs killed Saleh Arori, who was a senior political figure for Hamas and helped to found the group's military wing. The U.S. second gentleman, uh, husband to... Um, Vice President Harris, Doug Emhoff, posted on X about the vigil he attended for the six murdered Israeli hostages, saying, I'm absolutely gutted. The Jewish community is in pain and the trauma of October 7th has not gone away. The U.S. and Canada busted a planned terrorist attack on New York's Jewish community, intending to mark the one-year anniversary of the October 7th attacks. Mohammed Shaz Shazeb Khan, a 20-year-old Pakistani citizen residing in Canada, was arrested. And the head of Britain's M. Uh, MI6 foreign spy agency Richard Moore said he believed that Iran was planning to retaliate still for the killing of Ismail Hanania that happened uh, in Tehran, and it blames uh, Israel uh, for the assassination, um, saying that we will not be letting our guard down. Turkish President Erdogan said today that Islamic countries should form an alliance against what he called the growing threat of expansionism from Israel. And the U.S. Central Command said its forces successfully destroyed a Houthi drone and one support vehicle in a Houthi-controlled area of Yemen as hostilities between U.S. and allied forces have continued against Houthis based out of uh, Yemen. Last night, um, I had dinner with some friends and a physician from Southern Maryland who served two weeks as an emergency uh, trauma physician in Gaza. He was working in Nasser Hospital at Han Yunus for two weeks in August. Um, I could spend an hour or more telling you the things that we discussed and the things that I learned, but I wanted to highlight a few things that really struck me from the stories I heard and the pictures we saw. Um, the things I'm about to share are sensitive, so I wanted to issue a sensitivity warning. This physician shared realities about what's happening in Gaza, again, from the Nasser Hospital. He said the medical ward is unlike any he's ever seen. He said at times bombs would go off uh, in neighboring refugee camps. Uh, from Israeli attacks where shrapnel or even windows, uh, the blast would come into the operating room. He said there were inadequate cleaning supplies. Uh, antiseptic would come and would run out within a day. So then after a day or so, or even a few hours, blood would be caked on the floor or walls. He was speaking about not only blood, but the other things that are present after operations. And there was nothing available to be able to clean or disinfect except for water uh, in between patients and after surgeries. So water would be used to mop up guts and body parts and all of the things that were left behind. He said that there were so many flies present that doctors and nurses had to devise a system to place netting over patients' mouths to prevent flies from laying larvae in the mouths of patients. If they were ineffective, he said that he saw um, pulling out clumps of maggots from the mouths of patients because there were so many flies uh, present in the operating room and in the hospital. There were inadequate supplies like tubing for respirators and they would reuse tubing in between patients from patient to patient and they couldn't sterilize them. So infections are running rampant. He said half of the patients would often arrive from mass, mass casualty events uh, and they would be dead on arrival. Then there was a process of triage. Uh, there is a, a deficit of nurses um, and then there would be a color-coded system in the triage of um, who could be treated and who was suspected to die. Um, there is not a deficit of doctors because so many of the hospitals are closed, but there is a deficit of nurses. And then um, certain patients would be operated on, many would die in the midst of surgery, but if they did not, the ones that, are live, that lived, many of them would get infections the next day or in the days following the surgery. And some would die of those infections in days following. Flies would sometimes plant their larva uh, in the sites of wounds. Um, there were so many issues he said that he'd never seen before, you know, in terms of trauma surgery, working around issues like maggots, filth, uncleanliness. Uh, he said that their gloves were so inadequate and were often torn that the vast majority of time they just worked with their bare hands. He said it's a good thing that HIV and AIDS is not an issue in Gaza. A book he recommended is called War Doctor by David Knott, who he worked alongside in the uh, hospital in Gaza. Dr. Knott said that Gaza has some of the worst conditions he's ever seen. And he has been all over the world in places of war and conflict uh, and trauma. One of the things he said that struck me the most, and I want to sit with this and pray over it. He said, if I had any question about whether or not this is a genocide before I went into Gaza, I came out without any doubt. The vast majority of patients we saw were children and young men. He said, what is happening in Gaza is a very clear attempt to systematically wipe out an entire generation of children. He described the way that drones operate in Gaza, and I remember this from my time there, where there's a constant buzz in your ear, sometimes close and sometimes very far away. But some of these drones are militarized. They have the ability to be able to shoot and to kill, and they shoot indiscriminately at children. So many of the victims he saw, and I saw pictures of were children who had been shot in the head, 
uh, by Israeli drones. And he said, how can children be shot in the head? You know, not only dozens, but hundreds, if not thousands. The death toll of children now is believed to be more than 15,000. Some are saying 17, 18,000 children. How can children uh, be killed in those numbers and it not be the direct targeting of children? These are his words. He said, um, he described how this experience of seeing children under these circumstances is not uncommon, coming in with gunshot wounds, um, shrapnel. He said, this is a targeted execution of children. And as I listened, he said, how can it be otherwise? I do not know how this could be anything but seeking to wipe out an entire generation. Children being fatally shot in the head. If that's not genocide, I don't know what is. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy.